Hello there and welcome to another episode of Geek Out and Speak Out. My name is Geeks, so here we are again for another episode. Uh, what are we going to talk about this time? Hmm. Well, I do believe in my last video, I did actually tell you what I was um, going to talk about today. Uh, so a test for all those who, uh, who haven't watched my previous one. I don't mind, you know, you watch them as you want to watch them. But anyway, today I'm going to be talking about Logan. So, Logan, or as most people know him as, Wolverine. Um, he's had a bit of a um, career, Hugh Jackman has, as Wolverine, wouldn't you say? You know, he's done, done the X-Men films, and uh, he's so consistent with this character, it's unreal. Um, even the films that he's in that aren't too great, overall, his performances have always been um, above par, I would say. Um, with the, maybe the exception of Wolverine, Wolverine and X-Men's Origins, but we won't talk about that. That's kind of the unwanted stepchild of that franchise as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, yeah, they um, James Mangold, who directed Logan, he also directed the previous Wolverine film, um, which was set in Japan, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. I love that film. Um, not everyone did. It didn't. I don't think he got the best uh, critical um, response, but um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was a, a good uh, superhero action film, really. So when it was announced that James Mangold was going to return to the Wolverine franchise to do Logan, I was quite excited because, as I just said, I really enjoyed the, the previous one he did. Um, but uh, and then you know we didn't hear anything, and then they dropped the trailer. Um, the international trailer for it and it had me hooked straight away um, mainly because they, they anyone who's anyone if you're watching this go watch the trailer for Logan if you haven't seen it already um, it's got the wonderful version of Hurt by Johnny Cash over it which any, um, anyone who knows that song knows Johnny Cash knows what's behind the song knows it's one of the saddest songs you could ever ever listen to it breaks my heart every time I hear it, which I don't, I don't listen to it very often. But that coupled with all the imagery and footage from the Logan film, it just worked perfectly. And once you've seen the film, it makes so much sense. Um, because in this film, Wolverine isn't wisecracking, he isn't confident, he isn't, he, he's broken. He's a broken man, he is on the edge, um, he is bleak. Um, and yeah, he's, he's utterly, utterly broken all the way down to his core. So, um, so don't expect, uh, uh, like if you haven't seen, seen Logan, of course, uh, don't expect it to be a um, over the top superhero film because this is far from it. It's barely, I wouldn't even barely call it a superhero film. So just as a little disclaimer, this is going to be a, spo a completely full of spoilers. So if you don't want to know what happened, please don't watch anymore but the basic premise of the film is Wolverine he's not in the best health um, he's mentally uh, destroyed he's depressed he's suicidal um, and he agrees to um, through certain circumstances through the beginning of the film and uh, for a certain amount of money he um, agrees to take a child uh, to a sanctuary because mutants in I think it was in 2029 are all but extinct and uh, mutants are hunted down and so anyway Logan because he is being called Logan he isn't being called Wolverine he's called Wolverine very very little in this film um, he takes his child played by Daphne Keane um, along with Patrick Stewart who plays Xavier um, they go on it's like a road trip movie essentially um, and, but of course, you know, it wouldn't be much of a film if that was all that happens. Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of darkness in this film. And one of the things that, um, one of the things to know is that it isn't just a superhero film. It, there's so many different kinds of types of films, it's different genres in this film, in that um, it's superhero film, it's um, a road trip film, because it is essentially um, it's an action film it's a thriller there's elements of horror in there drama in there it's got so much and how it it incorporates them and how it jumps from genre to genre is nothing short of amazing 
Now, of course, this wouldn't be much of a superhero film without villains. Um, and in the villains are uh, the, the villains in this film are uh, an organization called Alkali, who have um, and Transigen, who have um, hired these mercenaries to, to track and capture um, Daphne Keane's character, the little girl in it, who, um, as most of us would know, uh, she's X23, um, who is Logan's daughter, um, which obviously comes to light in the film. Um, and so X23, or Laura, as she's called in the film, uh, she has um, been genetically created from Logan's DNA, so she is actually his genetic duplicate clone. I, I don't know how that works, but they didn't really go into specifics whether she was a clone or whether she was just genetically similar. I don't know. But um, anyway, let's not digress. Um, but yeah, the uh, alkali, they, they don't didn't just create Laura and the other mutants that are being hunted down because there are other children in it as well. They also created X-24 which um, obviously they didn't have this in any of the uh, marketing or any of the uh, adverts or trailers for it but X-24 is actually a uh, Wolverine or Logan clone. He's a clone without any of the memories or any of the thoughts or any or any of the experiences of Logan. He's X-24 is just pure rage. He's a killing machine. Um, so the, the, in the finale of the film, Wolverine, Logan, faces uh, X-24 uh, while protecting X-23, Laura, and the other mutant children that, he's, um, that, they, that they come across. And he's literally fighting himself. Um, now... Uh, I, th I think it's fair to say everyone knows that Wolverine actually, or Logan, dies at the end of this film. Um, but he actually dies literally, literally fighting himself. Um, the, the worst aspects of himself that he hates so much, he's actually fighting a physical form of it. Which, you know, is, is a little bit on the nose, but, uh, but I loved it. It was great. The, the thing to know about this film is it is uh, an adult film. There's a lot of swearing. The violence is so visceral and this is Wolverine how he should have always been in my opinion in that they didn't hold back with the violence they didn't hold back with the gore uh, you know he, he does some pretty nasty things with his cha -ching, with his with his claws and it's, it's amazing as well as X-23 does as well um, but the, the say this is not your traditional um, superhero film and you know the, the sad thing is about this film it isn't a feel-good film not at all it's very bleak um you know uh all the all the characters are so broken uh you know patrick stewart's character of charles xavier and um hugh jackman wolverine and um daphne Keane as x23 laura they're they're all broken people um but you know for a while through, through the film they do come together and they create almost create a family which is a, a family dynamic which is great um as is true with these things they never last but the, the support and cast that surrounds Hugh Jackman in the film is just, you know, second to none. You know, I've just named a couple of food, but you've got Stephen Merchant, um, Eric LaSalle, you've got yeah, just so so many. And it just creates a little world uh, within the superhero world. And it's, it's not a huge epic um, movie like an, an Avengers or it's a very small character, character film. And... Uh, uh, and it's just it's just amazing so in in preparation for this video i should re-watch the film last night and you know it is a, a, an incredible film um second to none the, all the marketing was good for it the trailer was amazing the trailer got my butt in the cinema i went to see this film twice at the cinema um so it is definitely worth worth watching um i hope you know i haven't spoiled it for anyone who might want to watch this uh, movie, but uh, it is worth watching. It is incredible. Um, it is a um, how it didn't. It, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb set and say that it was a tragedy that this wasn't up for Oscar nomination. They never have superhero films up for Oscar nomination, and it really gets on my nerves because you know, getting past the fact that um, there's a certain stigma to in, in the um, Hollywood community about how much recognition a superhero film should get the performances in this film regardless of whether it is a superhero film or not were second to none um 
you know, uh, and, and it, 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 the film did get awards and the actors did get awards. There's some MTV awards and some others as well, but it should have got an Oscar nomination beyond a shadow of a doubt. Actually, correction, it shouldn't have got a nomination. It should have got awards and that. But I'm going to stop now because I'm starting to get on my soapbox a little bit. Um, if I was going to give this um, out of 10, a mark out of 10, I think um, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. While I said, you know, maybe the villains weren't particularly great, it, everything is enhanced by everything else in the film. You know, the art design, how, you know, most of it's set in the desert and it's bleak and, oh, and the music and the acting, the performances, and that you almost forget you're watching a superhero film. You almost forget that you're watching a film about Wolverine, Professor Xavier, and X-23. Um, and that is a testament to just how good James Mangold was with this material and how Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart and all of these actors knew, knew, their, know their, knew their role, past tense, knew their role and, uh, and just put on something incredibly special. Um, now anyway, like I was saying, if I was going to give it a mark out of 10, I'll give it a 10 out of 10 because it is second to none. It is perfection in, in my eyes. There's very few films I can actually say is perfection, but I would say Logan is definitely one of them. Um, it's not a film that I can watch over and over again. I've got to be in a certain particular mood to watch it because of how bleak it is. But with everything included of what I just uh, spoke about, it is a stroke of genius. All right, so there we have it. Um, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I'm going to stop gushing about um, James Mangold and about Logan, because as you could probably tell, I really, really do enjoy this film, no matter how many times I watch it. Um, so what's next? Um, well, I've said in the past that, you know, I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, videos about films that I really enjoy. Um, and so I'm going to mix it up for the next one. I'm going to I'm going to talk about a film that I have some very strong opinions about um, and I have some issues with. So I, I apologize in advance for anyone who this might insult. Um, but I am going to be talking about Fast, uh, Fast and Furious 10. I am not going to be calling it Fast X. I have <laughs> I have a chip on my shoulder. Hang on, let me just brush that chip off my shoulder. I have a I have a chip on my shoulder about this because it's not Fast X. It's not an X. It's a 10. It's Roman numerals, people. It is the number 10. It is the 10th film. So it's going to be Fast and Furious 10. I'm not going to call it Fast and Furious X or Fast X. I'm going to call it Fast 10. Um anyway, that's one way. <laughs> Sorry, I went on a bit of a rant there. Um I'm going to be talking about Fast 10, not Fast X, Fast 10. Um, how I feel about it? Well, you could probably tell that I have some issues with the film, um, but you shall find out more when you tune in next week. Anyway, anyway, I was getting a bit fired up for that. Um, <laughs> take a breath, take a breath, geeks. Um, anyway, well, thank you for watching this video. Um, and... Uh, you know, uh, I hope you can tune in for my next one for Fast and Furious 10. Call it 10, not X. Uh, Fast and Furious 10 uh, coming up soon. I don't know when I'm going to be recording it. Um, you know, I've, I've only managed to, to get one in this weekend, but maybe next weekend or maybe during the week. Who knows? You know, I might mix it up and do it during the week. But um, yeah, so wait and see. It's coming soon, I promise you. But um, I hope to see you all next time. Thank you for watching this video. And that's, uh, that's it for now.